couple of days ago, Arch released Pac-Man 6.0, and during that whole fiasco, one of the things you might have had to do was compare files. And that's not something that I'd ever really had to do on Linux before, at least on a grand scale. And I didn't really know how to go about it. And so I looked it up, and there are actually a few different ways of doing this. Now, today what I thought I'd do is cover two different ways you can compare files on Linux. Now, the first one is called diff. And before we jump into diff, I just want to say... Really, diff is for smaller files, at least in my experience, which is not a large amount of experience because I just started using this a couple days ago. But it seems to me that if you are trying to compare much larger files, the efficiency or the efficacy of of diff would go down because you'll see. It just wouldn't be easy to go through and parse that many differences in a larger amount of data. So let's go ahead and jump into diff, and then after that I'm going to be talking about meld, which is a GUI application, which is going to be much better for larger files. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing we need to do is find two files that we want to compare, and I'm just going to use the files that I compared for the Pac-Man 6.0 fiasco. And those files are in the Etsy folder, so if we do an ls here, we'll actually see two pacman.com files, this one here and this one here. And what we want to do is compare them. And we can do that using the diff command. So we'll do diff pacman.conf and pacman.conf.pacnew. And then we just hit enter. Now, let me zoom in here a little bit. Well, what we'll actually do is run that again so that we can actually see. So the question becomes, how do you read the output of this file? And that's where it gets a little tricky. So there are certain ways that you read these codes, and it's really is kind of like deciphering codes. So what does 5 comma 6 D4 mean? So those numbers at the beginning refer to the first file, always the first file. So in this case, it's pacman.conf. The, num the number after the letter always refers to the second file. So in this case, pacman.conf.pacnew. The letter in between changes. As you can see, we got a D, we got a C, there's another C. Uh, you might also find an A here somewhere, but I don't have an A, so I can't show you that. The question is, what do those mean? So D in this situation means deleted. So that means lines 5 and 6 need to be deleted from the first file in order to match the second file, uh, which is on line 4. So that means that these two lines here have to be removed from the first file in order to match the second file. It's like I said, this is not the easiest thing to decipher because it's, I mean, it looks weird, right? And it's kind of complicated. So the letter C means that the line in the first file needs to be changed to match the file line in the second file. So what we, this means is we need to change line 33 or 35 in the first file to match the second file, which is on line 33. Again, <laughs> it's really confusing. And down here we have another deletion. So line 37, which needs to be deleted to match line 34, which is, so it would be exactly the same. So the question becomes then, what's the comma mean? So basically, if you use them, you'll know that this means arrange. So this means line 39 through line 41. In order to get those to match lines 36 to through 37, we need to add these lines here or take them out. It, you know, it depends on which way you're going, right? The next thing you have to know is what these greater than or less than signs are. So the, this greater line here is always referring to the first file. The less than sign or this other sign here, I guess, I always get those mixed up, um, uh, re refers to the second file. So if you're thinking this is super, super complicated and why would you ever do this, I'm with you. Like, I just think I went through and explained this and everybody's probably like, Matt, that was the most confusing thing. And then the people who know how to use diff are like, what are you talking about? That's not how it works. So when I first was looking at how do I go through and compare files this is what I came up with like you know I kind of understand it like I'm looking at a tutorial and it shows you how things are doing like I understand like 
Lines 5 and 6 in line 1 would need to be deleted in order to match the second file. Okay, I, uh, I'm pretty sure that that's what that means. According to the tutorial, that's what that means. And the, the, C's down, the C1 that means that we need to change these lines in the first file in order to match the second file. Or maybe it's the other way around. I don't... Like, it's very confusing, right? <laughs> like, I don't know. So, that's where meld comes in. So, if you can figure out what diff means, more power to you. And I, I hope that the the horrible explanation I just had, and I will link a better, much better tutorial in the, in the de video description, it will at least make a little bit more sense than what I did. Uh, if you can't figure this out, let's look at meld, because meld is much better. So what we were going to do is, you can do this from, uh, you can open meld up in a, from your menu system, whatever you want to do. I'm going to open up from the terminal because it's easier. I'm going to do meld, and then I'm going to do the same two files as I did before. And then we'll make this full screen. And then I think I can zoom in here. That way you can actually see. Okay, good. All right. But anyways, as you can see, this is actually much better. So as you can see, the, on the left-hand side, we have pacman.conf. On the right-hand side, we have pacman.conf.packnew. And what meld will do, I'll actually go through and highlight the differences. So this line here exists in pacman.conf. This line here, or in, in this file here, it doesn't exist. And here we have color. Now we can we see what diff was talking about earlier. So if we go back up here to diff, we can see that those two lines that were highlighted in meld just a second ago exist in the first file and not in the second file. So that's why it wants you to delete them in order to get them to be the same. And the same thing with color here. We have one that is uncommented. We have one that is commented. So if we go back here, we have these two differences here. Okay, and that's the basically what it's saying is that it needs you to change one or the other. That's why it's there's a space in between here, and we have this uh, this symbol here referring to both files. The, the line here is exactly the same, just there's that one difference. Okay, and the same thing here with this here. We cannot check this space from within the uh, true environment. You know, this exists in one and not in the other. And same thing here. Now, you'll notice the different colors. When something doesn't exist in one file and the other, it's green. When there's just a slight difference between them, like the line exists, but there's a difference. So in this case, some are uncommented, some are commented, uh, then the color is blue. And those are the only changes or the only differences in these files. Now, if we go back to diff, the same thing here is we know that this line here, because it says D, doesn't exist in the first file because it shows us this here. And we know that the these lines here, because it uses the letter C, exist in the both files, but they're different. And that's just showing you the difference between them. So that is diff and meld. Now, what I think, if you noticed, is that once I opened up meld, it was much easier to actually understand what the hell diff was talking about. So. The way I see it is always start with meld. Meld is a great program. It's something that a lot of people use. And I, I normally kind of shy away from GUIs because I prefer to use terminal-based applications. But in this case, actually being able to see the differences and not have to deal with really weird symbols and syntax and stuff like that. I mean, at first, at least, you know, this is better, right? Actually seeing the difference is is better. But also, because you've started on this one, because now I've you know looked at this, I can understand the output of diff way better than I could before I looked at melt. So in this case, I think it's a really it's a really good example of how a GUI application can kind of show you how certain Linux commands actually work in a more visual way and can kind of lead you to actually learning more. So for me personally, I probably will always use meld because when I need to do this, I actually want to see those differences. But if you're just comparing a very two very short files, diff probably would do you just fine. 
uh, as long as you can understand what you're, what it means, which I'm not saying that I always can. I obviously always can't. I mean, <laughs> that's not the way you say it, but I don't care. That's just, uh, you know, the output can be very confusing when you use diff. And so these two different methods kind of lose their... Meld is always going to be superior, especially when you have a ton of changes, because you don't want to actually have to go through all that diff stuff if you have, you know, 30 or 40 differences between the files, right? You know, it's really good if there's just two or three differences, which is was the case here. Uh, or at least it can be really good if you can understand the output. So that is it for me today. If you understand how to use diff, make sure you leave a comment below. Goodness knows you're probably one of the only ones. So uh, I'll also leave a link for both diff and meld in the video description below. Make sure you check them out. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Uh, before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.